Filmed the evening before we met IKS Exploration, our adventure into Dover's history began with the Second World War engineering marvel. That's an old radar station there, and they're just going in to have a good look around. Step, 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 step there, step there. That's it. Come on, let get your leg over, Andy lad. Sit above that. That's it. Now you're framing. We're going over the edge of the cliff to have a to have a look around. There's some uh, tunnels this way. This is Lydon Spout Battery. Construction was completed in 1941 on the cliffs between Dover and Folkestone. It is a similar design to that at Fan Bay, which will be a future episode in this series. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to ALW Research Team. Lydon Spout was originally armed with three 6-inch Mark 7 naval guns on Mark 5 mountains. As advancements became available, these were upgraded to Mark 14 guns on the same mountings. The Mark 14 was a coastal defence gun with the same performance as the Mark 7, as seen in the previous episode at St Martin's Battery, but the Mark 14 had a loose barrel construction. About 140 Mark 14 guns were manufactured during World War II. The gun positions were demolished and partially filled in as part of the Operation Eyesore Clearance initiative of the 1970s. Today, our objective is to access the deep shelter tunnel network that is down the cliff edge. But first, let's take a look at the remains of the warrant officers and sergeants mess and the cookhouse that remain on the surface. Let's go. All it wall there with some cast iron coming out. That looks like it could have been a flue. Yes, agreed. Because in here we've got what used to be for a water tank. Not the water pipe work there. Yeah. So this would have been a boiler room. Yeah. That would have been an oil fired boiler and thing. Or it could have been coal fired. Could have stoked it up, you know. Yeah, it might have done. And here we are inside. So this has been used more recently for farm farming. And the like. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So we're only briefly looking at these buildings because we're going down uh, Leiden Spout, which is this way. That looks like a. Uh, that looks almost like a barrack block. Yeah, it could actually be a barrack block, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you it briefly, but we've got to get down that hill yet. Well, the cliff. Yeah, it looks like a mess room. Yeah, this looks like a World War II mess hall. T-shirt. No, we are. Some of the window frames are still extant, but most of them have been smashed up by vandals. But our target for, for this video is down the cliff. So, see you in a minute. So this is the plotting room bunker here, but it's got these concrete blocks on top and it's padlocked as well. This is the old galvanised vent coming out the top of it. The light on for you. And that is, this is the potting room under here. Harry tells me this is a bit of a sketchy climb, so let's have a look. Just on a GoPro at the minute. So, right. So I've seen Ian's vlogs here a few times. 
That sea look, that looks lovely, you know, it's all milky. That's really nice. Harry's gone quiet. He usually goes quiet when so much sketchy is coming up. So that does look nice down there though. It does look nice. Don't know how much. Yeah, I won't want to bathe in it, but I reckon on a summer's day that would look lovely. Very inviting. Yes. So we've got to catch up with Harry. We're going down there somewhere. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. Is it just down to that concrete yeah. there? Yeah, written. Oh, right. Oh, that isn't so bad. I thought it was like way down. Down to that oh, yeah. concrete and then way down. <laughs> down to the concrete and then in, I think. And then way down. Oh, okay. Down, down, deeper and down, deeper and down. Oh, you can see you. Look, on shore there. Oh, I think that's where Colin Fairs did his fart at France. The fart at France? Yeah, he made a big pulse jet oh. uh, in the shape of a bottom. Oh, that's all right, look. Yeah, this isn't the way in though, is it? Do we need to go down there even more? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do I try and catch that as I'm slipping down the perilous slope? Don't worry, this a bit rough there, so it's near the shrubbery. Oh, okay. As you can see, there was some steps down here. Yeah. A bit of, bit of historical. Uh, yeah. That was a Monty Python sketch, wasn't it? Was it? You shall not pass. Until you give us a, a shrubbery. Shrubbery. <laughs> a shrubbery. <laughs> Knights of the Holy Grail. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> oh well. A shrubbery. Viewers, can you remember that? <laughs> a shrubbery. A shrubbery. <laughs> that's where the rope starts, oh, is it? Right. Yeah. And then go up. Go up. Up. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that. But we didn't know this route, so what ah. we did was we, we scaled the whole cliff. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> That's a long way down. Yeah. I'll stand here and then I can, you can film laugh, you laugh at you as you go tumbling by. It'll be like that. Yeah, that, that sound. Whoa. It'll be like a sliding noise. Yeah. Hey, ready, Freddy. See, look at that. Doddle, you did it with ease. Yeah. Yeah. And we're back in the room. Back in the room. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. cool. So we're off in now, chaps. I'm females. I'm not sexist. Uh, Dave's off in. <laughs> right. I don't wow. hang about. No. <sighs> I do. <laughs> yeah, this is where all the wood's broken, isn't it? I've seen this on uh, Ian's channel. Are you putting yourself together out there? No, I'm going to climb in through all the dangerous collapsing bits first. Right, okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we'll pass you over to Dave then. To me. To you. In we go. On his hands and knees to start with. But I can nearly stand up. Oh, there's a bit of a, a chamber here where it's collapsed, but it affords us a bit of height to stand up. On to the next bit. Oh, there's a door. That's it. Down here. Here we go. I'm illuminating for you. You light up my life in more ways than one. <laughs> so we're going anti-clockwise. Yeah, so I'm... And he's going uncle-clockwise. Uh, uncle-clockwise? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, so Dave's going that way, I'm going this way. Right, okay, and I'll see you in a bit. So it's nice now, is it? Oh, where we go? Quite a lot of the galve conduit is still in this bit. And, as you can see here, there's one of the old um, intrinsically safe light fittings or luminaire. And it's bied onto the wood. And we can see there's quite a bit of woodworm in there. In the chalk. Well, the wood that's on the chalk. There's a little claps here. As we carry on into the ironwork and the 
what looks like galvanized steel. The chalk's really soft underfoot. Someone's handily put. They've put arrows on the floor. There. I remember, yeah, seeing a, a vlog of Ian's where well, this, this, I think this is like leather uh, and it used to be like a smoke curtain that went over and then this has all been panelled in wood to make it nicer for the people that worked down here. Uh, there was also, I remember seeing photographs of this galve ventilation ducting and it was all up on the roof still. I don't know if someone's either pulled it down or it's fallen down by itself. So that's back to the the way that we came in and the fork in the road and then we've come into this section here and then that is one of the cross passages in this tunnel network. You can see one of the straps there where the galve ventilation used to be held up it's either been pulled down or it's fallen down you can see some more of the material that's been used to line this structure and the floor is remarkably intact solid and stable which we like. The wooden cladding, most of it is intact and we can only see some areas where the wood's starting to rot now, where the water's been coming through. Let's carry on this way and rendezvous with Dave. It's like tar paper and lat fastened to the uh, to the roof and that curves all the way over as you can see but now of course it's sadly deteriorated so when this bunker was in use you wouldn't have been able to see the corrugations because it would have been covered with insulation and and that like it's like a wax paper but it's actually tar that's in it is that what it is wax paper yeah, and tar well, i couldn't yeah, work it out it's it, it's what they use the ducting is covered in it and it's what they used to use the old days um before they have all this modern stuff and yeah. it's like uh, it's like cardboard and it's soaked in wax so it serves the fire so and so it keeps it waterproof ah right so uh, wax and what was it tar. wax and bitumen. tar bitumen and bitumen yeah. like a lining so, sounds really <laughs> flammable there's a set of stairs there oh yeah oh wow i'm guessing that was the original entrance I've been up the first flight, but then it turns and goes up another flight. Yeah. So uh, we're getting out of breath. So oh, I'll go I, up didn't, there. I didn't go right to the top. Yeah. So I'll leave that for you younger. <laughs> Not that much younger, younger, but younger yeah, I'll do it. Right. Yeah, let's go up the stairs, folks. Let's okay. see what's up there. So I'll leave Dave and his nice slow, nice slow camera movements. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Did I'm you stick into the floor? It's like a mid 90s nightclub floor this, it's it proper is. sticks. Look at this. Yeah, you stick to the floor. Wow. So we've got some more galv trunk in here, but this looks like, this looks like it always was floor mounted. Should we take a look down here before we do the stairs? Now let's, we'll do the stairs, we'll go up there, see how far we can get, and we'll come down and then we'll go that way. So let's look this way first. Oh, we've got an old fuse box. The old uh, vulcanised rubber and cloth. You see that, viewers? Yeah, part of the electrical system that was in this tunnel network. So that is a big set of concrete stairs. So let's go up. Yeah, we can see there what Dave was talking about the bitumen so they've, they've uh, tried to insulate that that ducting vent duct let's go up here
Yeah, it's remarkably fresh. Now there's a lot of rock here. That's what we've got up there. Yeah, that's where it's been filled in. That'll be quite dangerous climbing up that. There's be all rocks that'll come down. So, I think up there he's possibly back to the surface. Should we take a look? Should we have a look, viewers? I don't know what's up there. Have a look. There's a lot of footsteps, which makes me think it's probably worth it. It means I'm quite out of breath. No, what looking at this? I might be quite dodgy coming back down. I don't know what's up there. A lot of infill. So, looking at this drawing drawn by Thomas of Thomas's Gaming Adventures, link in the end screen. We entered the lid and spout deep shelter here via the emergency exit. I spoke to Dave in around this area looking at the staircase. I'm now on the next set of the staircase turning left. Looking up towards the next 90 degree left, that would have gone up to a small blockhouse. This was the main entrance to the deep shelter, but this blockhouse has now been demolished and is no longer visible on the surface. But yeah, that looks quite dodgy. Bear in mind, I'm carrying a camel with a gimbal on it and it weighs about four kilos. But you can see there, that is quite steep. As we look back down, it's got turn now. So that's pretty slippery actually. The sort of clay mud that's underfoot. So up my feet around because of all the rock that's come down it's blocking the stair it's blocking the actual steps so I can't stand on the steps properly there we go down we go that's nice all the same though yeah, that's good that oh there we go So Harry's just setting up his tripod to take some pictures down here. As we are going to go down this cross section to carry on with our tunnel explore. You can see on the floor there, it looks like there used to be, oh that's part of the flooring, or that used to be a door that's fallen over. We can see here that there possibly was a door case in here. As we, oh wow well, there's some, uh, there's some graffiti there. October the 5th, 1943. W1J1, Bank Bolton, West Kent Signals. Don't know if that's genuine or not, but it's there all the same. Can you see that, viewers? Boxing. So, I'll take a picture. So let's continue along this cross passage. We've got another door there. And it's got the old green MOD paint on it, see that, as we go this way, you can see the galve trunking is in great condition, by galve I mean galvanised steel, which is rust resistant steel, we can see the, the wax and bitumen that Dave was pointing out earlier on his footage. Yeah, so this side seems to be a little bit damper than the other side, and I'm guessing that's because of the ingress of water down the down the entrance stairs this is one of the other rooms that comes across and i believe that at the other side is a tunnel that we came in and we went up along there so it just goes round in like a big horseshoe uh now then another little bit of a collapse here uh because i think the reason for this collapse is it was showed up with timbers. The metal supports ends here and the corrugation. 
so this would have been just shored up like a, a pit like a mine and sadly the timbers have rotted away well you can see the state of them they're very badly decayed there's no strength left in them and the, the roof has come crashing down a little bit I'm surprised how little decay there is. I mean, obviously the wood's rot, but the steel work in all is in pretty good condition. It's intact, isn't it? Yeah. The corrugated sheeting is there's hardly any decay on that at all. No. I haven't seen this type before where it's sort of squared off. It, it looks square. It looks modern, like um, yeah. Kingspan. Do you know what this reminds me of? The square section. You know when you used to see the, the tanks with the big roll on top, what they used to lay down in front of them? Hmm. Uh, that was a square section, I believe. Was it for the tracks yeah, to like dig into? Well, well no, they they lay and then the vehicles could come along behind it with the wheeled vehicles. It just yeah. like lays a temporary road. Yeah. So that was more like this. I could have done with some of that when I got the... Uh, I got... got I was filming a railway series recently and I got the transit van stuck in a field, which... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a bit... I vlogged it, that's on the members section. Little video of that. You'll see behind us there, there's some like fly screening. So I'm wondering if this was a, either a toilets area with all the extra wood and it's just rotted away to nothing. These could have been toilets just at this end section, which we've seen in, we've seen that in uh, air raid shelters and things like that in the past. But all these sort of MOD builds are, uh, they are quite similar in design. What are you thinking, Dave? Yeah, I'm thinking that definitely toilets. Probably that. toilets. Yeah. Yeah. Have you logged all this? I've been up and down. I've been up, up, up this. I haven't been down it, but I've been up it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the centre line tunnel. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got another cross passage here. So the tunnel that you probably came down first. Is that right, Dave? That's where I came. Down, down that way. That goes, goes down and then connects to that. Wow. Route I came up. It's quite a network of tunnels, this, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It would have yeah. taken quite a bit of digging out. Yeah, it would have done, yeah. So, I don't know whether they dug it from the cliff and got rid of the spoils over the cliff or whether they dug it from the top and carried it out. Don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, they used to use adits in railway tunnels, didn't yeah. they? They used to dig out to the side and dump all the spoil dump over the, the side. Dump all the spoil over the side. Which, I suppose, in time of war, um, that's the best way to do it. It's not the most environmentally friendly, but it's the best way to do it. This wheel go down this centre section. Yeah. Yeah, but like Dave says, it's in remarkable condition. The fixtures and fittings are, you know, gone. Pretty much rotted away. But they've cleared it out nice, haven't they, with this? Yeah. You know, this. Boarded up to the yard I like. And then. Yeah. Um, just covered in that tar paper all the, all the rest of the way. Yeah, so I reckon with some ventilation from the... We did see that big... Uh, I, I said upstairs that we thought that was a big M&E plinth room, didn't we? Yes. That first one near the mess hall. Yeah, that's right. So that would have provided warmed heating down here, you know, warmed yeah. air. Blown air heating, rather. <laughs> I'm getting all my air, airs mixed up. Yeah. So we've got another cross section there. I mean, I don't think they would have needed heating down here, just ventilation. Because, uh, as you can feel now, it's fairly warm. If they stay a constant temperature underground. Um, yes. And then once you get a few bodies down here, and some equipment maybe, you know, old valve sets give enough heat. Yeah, you only need, need the cold. Hot, so you wouldn't need heating, you just need the fresh air. Yeah, we've got an old luminaire here, with the it's smash good. guard still on it. Yeah, it's still got you the basket on it and the lamp holder in it. Yeah, you can see the bayonet fitting inside. We've got the centre section here. And then let's go down here. In part of this deep shelter explore. As we see, the woodwork has sadly fallen away there as it's rotting down in the moist air. We've got Harry the photographer behind us. As we look at the galve trunk in here, moving back to the main corridor, going this way. 
and this this corridor's got a bend on it. Look, that at that end. So we'll go back up there soon. We've got the we've got the uh, mesh there. In this area, what I believe was the latrines, which would have just been the Elson buckets that we've seen in, you know, that we see quite a lot in the Royal Observer Corps bunkers and the Liverpool, uh, the Liverpool bunkers, the air raid shelters there for the Littlewoods buildings. I'll put a link above or in the description box for those. That was a cracking explore. So moving back this way, you can see that there's a diffuser on this, on the end of this uh, galve, galve duct in here for the ventilation. So move it that way. It's all come down. I don't know if it's been pulled down or if it's fallen down. So I remember some photographs uh, that are girl called Nisha Adams put up and all the all the ducts work was still on the ceiling and then a couple of months later she went back down it all been torn down so shout out to her as we move this way and we're going back towards the cliffs of Dover you can see the deep shelters getting tighter now as we're moving back out towards the V-shaped junction here as we're looking back at the deep shelter here so this looks like it was designed so it could funnel both sides could funnel out here towards this which is probably the emergency exit out onto the cliff face If those indents were for candles as we see across there lest we forget as you can see here where they've constructed it they've put up the metal hoops with the corrugated sheet behind it and then they've backfilled with this ballast all the way around to get, add more support to the uh, where they've dug it out, stop it crumbling. So there's, you know, taking the time in doing that. These look to be a metre long. Well, there would have been a yard in them days. So they've uh, put that uh, corrugated sheeting in a yard at a time and then backfilled it. There's another hole in the ground where I think this post would have been sat in that. And here's where the other tunnel goes off. And you can see at the side there where the back filled it, they put lumps of wood and all sorts in. You see the wood rotting away that's behind that. But mainly made up of uh, lumps of chalk and uh, back filled above there to give some support to the roof. Right then viewers, this was Lydon Spout Deep Shelter. We're going to make our way back out onto the cliff face now. But on the way, Dave wants to show us something. I don't know what he was saying. A little bit of wildlife has crept in here. Wildlife? Yeah. I've never seen one this colour. It's a moth. But look at the colours on that. Right. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's lovely. I don't know what sort of moth it is. Do you know viewers? What sort of moth is that? I haven't seen one that colour before. I've never seen one like that. That's pretty cool. I like yeah. it. What I don't like is all these massive cracks in the chalk that we're stood underneath of. But you know what? <laughs> It'll be right. It'll be right. Uh, yeah. So we're going back out now. I forgot to take my camera to bits, so I'll do it on the outside. 
yeah, I'll do it out there. I need to take my camera to bits to get it up the cliff. Here's Eric. Now we're coming back out. So that, that was Lydon Spout Deep Shelter. Thank you so much for watching this ALW Research Team video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. So we've got a full series of this coming. So click that subscribe button and I'll see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time. Bye bye for now. Bye. Juffy now, that's a long way down. That's right. Looking over my shoulder Looking back at your door Goes over and over. Should I leave or want it more?